Recording started. All right. So today we are going to get into the first unit. Now the first unit is, uh, while it has the nervous section or the nervous system part, and then it goes into the endocrine system. But first of all, we're going to be focusing on the nervous system. Okay, now most people know that the nervous system involves nerves, okay, but also involves, uh, you know, the brain. The brain is a pretty important part of the nervous system. Um, here we go. Guy's using his brain right now. He's got artist block. Bad deal. Now, the nervous system, you know, we use for memory, learning language, all sorts of things. Now, here's some brain facts that make you go, hmm. So, your brain contains uh, 100, contains 100 billion neurons. That's a lot. So, if you lined them up, uh, they would uh, stretch out to be 100 kilometers long. There are more neurons in the human brain than there are stars in the Milky Way. That's a lot. Uh, during a baby's early development, neurons grow at a rate of 250,000 neurons per minute. That's amazing. The velocity of a nerve impulse is about 250 miles an hour. Um, a lot of maximum of. There are 1,000 to 10,000 synapses for a typical neuron. So each neuron has a lots and lots of synapses. Uh, the diameter of a neuron is pretty small, um, 4 to 100 microns. The adult brain weighs about 3 pounds, so about uh, <clears throat> 1,400 grams, about 2% of our total body weight. The total volume of cerebral spinal fluid is about 150 milliliters. There are 13.5 million neurons in the human spinal cord. And uh, unconsciousness will occur, occur after 8 to 10 seconds uh, of blood loss to the brain. Cut off that blood supply. Put the rear naked choke on him. And he's going to be out right away. <clears throat> okay, so those are just interesting things. Now, the basic functions in the nervous system are basically these three. Sensation, integration, and reaction. Now, sensation, the... the is basically the body monitoring changes or events occurring in and outside the body. Such changes are known as stimuli, and the cells that monitor um, these things are called receptors. Now, biology has got a huge volume of uh, vocabulary terms, so that is very important to understand all the terms. So if I'm going through here and there's any term you don't you know, quite understand, uh, you know, stop me, ask some questions. It will all be good. Now, number two, integration. This is the processing and interpretation of sensory information to determine the appropriate response. Now, sometimes integration is automatic. There's really no thinking to it, and other times it is, uh, you know, a conscious act. And then there is the reaction, which is the motor output, the activation of muscles, glands, or other bodily tissues. Any questions about these basic functions? No, no, we're all good. Okay, continuing along. Now, the nervous system is organized into the central ner nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So that's the CNS and the, and the PNS. Now, the central nervous system is going to coordinate incoming and outgoing information is the center of integration and control. So the main components of the central nervous system uh, are the brain and the spinal cord. Okay. Um, now the peripheral nervous system carries information between organs and the central nervous system. So it's going to consist of 31 different spinal nerves that carry information to and from the spinal cord and 12 cranial nerves that carry information to and from the brain. Okay, now within the peripheral nervous system there is uh, another sort of division, another categorization, and that is your autonomic nerves and your somatic nerves. Now your 
autonomic nerves are going to control involuntary internal um, functions. So an autonomic nerve would be associated with your heartbeat. You don't think about, you know, your heart beating. You say, okay, now I'm going to contract my ventricles and relax my atriums. Um, no, it just happens, okay? And this is because it's under the autonomic nerve control. Now, the autonomic nerve control is um, also connected with what's known as the sympathetic um, sort of nervous system response. Now, the sympathetic system response is known as the fight or flight response. So if you get scared, all of those things that happen to your body are known as the sympathetic response. Things like dilated pupil, increased breathing rate, um, blood being shunted away from your digestive organs and towards your skeletal muscles, uh, you know, the, the things that adrenaline help uh, produce. Now your somatic nerves, they are uh, voluntary, they're under your control. So controls muscles, uh, bones and skin, well, bones, bones don't have nerves, so that's kind of silly. Anyways, but um, they also will be relaying the sensory information to the brain about the environment, okay, and will initiate response to the environment uh, in their motor response. Now, we talked about the sympathetic response that it prepares you for fight or flight, but there's also the opposite or antagonistic response known as the parasympathetic response, which is the rest and digest uh, response. So it will put you back to uh, a homeostasis, uh, you know, a relaxed type of, of physiological state. Okay, so are there any questions about this sort of um, subdivision of the nervous system, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, and the subcomponents thereof? Question. Nope. Awesome possum. Okay, now the brain and spinal cord contain uh, fluid-filled spaces. Okay, so here we have a picture of the brain, and you will need to be able to, uh, you know, label diagrams or interpret, you know, information um, pertaining to diagrams. So here we have... Um, your spinal cord down here, okay, and then you go and you have these spaces known as ventricles in the brain where you have fluid. Need that fluid. Now outside here we have meninges which are basically outside protective layers outside of the brain and there's actually three meninges uh, outside the brain and we're going to get into that later on. But the other part of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. There's a cross section. And the spinal nerve is actually a part of the peripheral nervous system. Okay. But within the central nervous system, you have both white matter and gray matter. Okay. So white matter are basically a certain type of nerve fiber um, known as myelinated nerve fibers. And we'll talk a little bit later what myelin is. Uh, gray matter doesn't have this myelin. So myelin is kind of, of white in appearance, and it's either present or not present in different types of nerves. Okay. Now, the gray matter, um, you know, without the myelination, tends to have a little slower nerve impulse to transmission. So that's one of the main differences between white and gray matter is the speed of nerve impulse transmission it tends to be faster in the white matter. Okay, now the peripheral nervous system of invertebrates, invertebrates rather, is a functional hierarchy. So uh, it contains sensory division, okay, which senses external and internal environment. We talked a bit about this already. Then there's the no, the motor division, which is the autonomic and the somatic. Okay, and the autonomic has both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic division. So this, I think, is a good diagram to show the, the hierarchy of the peripheral nervous system. Probably a little better than the last one because it's a little more organized. Okay. Um, 
Any questions about the peripheral nervous system organizational hierarchy or functional hierarchy? Either way. Nope, no. Okay, ooh, we can't read that very good. The motor division of the peripheral nervous system. Um, it basically, just talking about the autonomic nervous system exerts involuntary control over internal organs and the somatic nervous system exerts voluntary control over skeletal muscles. So that's the motor division in particular. Okay. Now the autonomic nervous system consists of two sets of neurons that function antagonistically in most body organs. Okay, so basically the autonomic nervous system can rev up certain organs or rev them down. Okay. Uh, now the parasympathetic division primes the body for activities that gain and conserve energy. Okay, so when you want to gain energy, uh, you might want to digest something. So the digestive system is, is going to be um, stimulated by the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, so the opposite is going to occur by the sympathetic uh, nervous system or division because it's preparing the body for intense energy consuming activities. So it's going to shut down digestion, for example, and, and turn on the skeletal muscles. Uh, you know, give them lots of blood and, uh, you know, energy in the form of, of blood glucose, etc. Okay. Now here, this diagram I kind of like. It shows quite a bit uh, because you have your parasympathetic division. It constricts the pupils and the sympathetic dilates. Uh, parasympathetic stimulates saliva production. Sympathetic shuts it down. Um, parasympathetic constricts bronchi or is going to decrease uh, respiration, whereas the sympathetic relaxes bronchi, uh, which is going to um, you know, stimulate breathing. And this is actually why you know, if you, people get a constriction in their airway due to, say, uh, anaphylaxis, um, a shot of adrenaline, which is you know, one of the main um, chemicals associated with the sympathetic division uh, will cause that bronchi to relax and you will have, um, you know, better breathing. Now, parasympathetic is going to slow the heart. Sympathetic accelerates the heart. Uh, the parasympathetic is going to stimulate the stomach, the pancreas, the intestines, things that have to do with digestion. It will stimulate urination and promote um, genital function, whereas the parasympathetic is going to um, stimulate glucose release, which will be used by the muscles, but inhibit stomach, pancreas, and intestine action. It will inhibit urination, and um, it can have some activities uh, involved with the sexual uh, physiology, but different than the parasympathetic. So in, in that instance, they can um, work in a coordinated way, I guess. All right. Um, any questions about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic effects in the nerve system? Nope. Okay, moving along. Now, the cells of the nervous system are known as neurons. They're the functional unit of the nervous system, and they are known as conducting cells. Who can tell me what the neurons conduct? What are they going to conduct? So you can text me the answer. What are neurons going to conduct? Now, conducting means it's taking... You know, something starts in one place and it goes to another place. That's a hint. Ah, I think there are some people coming back. Hmm. Conducts nerve impulses. Neurons conduct nerve impulses. Right? Now, nerve impulses are basically, uh, you know, a potential difference, uh, an electrical impulse. 
Okay. Now, there are also types of cells other than the neurons that can provide structural port support, but they're non-conducting cells, and they're known as uh, neuroglial cells. Okay. Now, neuroglial cells, um, there tends to be lots of them, 10 of those for one neuron. There are six types of supporting cells. Uh, four types in the central nervous system and two in the peripheral. The central nervous system neuroglia are uh, things like the astrocytes, and they can guide the migration uh, of developing neurons. They're involved in the formation of the blood-brain barrier, and they uh, function in nutrient transport or transfer. <clears throat> uh, you also have your oligodendrocytes, which uh, wrap around axons to form the myelin sheath. So I talked about, you know, myelin previously. We said that the white matter had myelin, uh, but the, the gray matter did not. Well, this is the myelin here. It's kind of a, one of these neuroglial cells. Wraps around the uh, neuron, okay? Now what this does is it basically inhibits conduction and it forces nerve impulses to jump. Because it jumps, you know, these areas, it actually transmits uh, more quickly, a faster rate. So it's kind of clever. Okay, so what do we got here? Here we have um, kind of a diagram that shows the relationship between uh, your neurons. Here's your neuron cells here and here. And then you've got an oligodendrocyte uh, connecting them here. You've got an astrocyte associated with one over here. And here's a neuroglial cell. Okay. Now the peripheral nervous system, neuroglia, um, there's a little bit different types. You have uh, your satellite cells surround clusters of neuron cell bodies. Uh, they don't know what they do but they're in the peripheral nervous system. So there you go. Now, neurons. These you have to know in detail. Um, they're specialized to conduct information from one part of the body to another, or a nerve impulse, basically. Now, there's three types of neurons. There's the sensory neuron, interneuron, and a motor neuron. Now, the sensory neuron is going to relay information about the environment to the central nervous system. So you can have sensory receptors in your eyes that respond to light, sensory receptors in your skin to respond to pressure or temperature. Um, so these are a type of neuron. Now your interneurons are going to integrate and interpret sensory information and connect neurons to outgoing motor neurons found in the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so your interneurons are in the central nervous system primarily and are going to be um, interpreting the sensory info, okay? So if you put your hand on a hot surface, um, your sensory neurons are going to take that information, this surface is hot. Uh, but if it didn't go to something that interpreted it as hot, like your brain, then you would just say, oh, there's some sort of hot sensation. Uh, you wouldn't even be able to really say it was hot. You just say there's sensory input from my hand. Okay, but your brain tells you this is hot. And then the next part is the motor um, neurons because they're going to activate things like muscles and glands to make things happen. So what do you think is going to happen once your brain tells a motor neuron that a surface is hot? Oh, come on, this is not a hard one. I have to make sure you're conscious every once in a while. No sleeping through tutorials, that's a rule. <clears throat> you move your hand, excellent. The motor neuron is going to activate the muscle, maybe your bicep muscle, and cause your hand to retract away from the hot place. Do you agree, Courtney? Excellent. OK, 
Okay, so here you have uh, neural circuits, also known as the reflex arc. Okay, now you may have a stimulus. Let's say you go to the doctor's office and he whacks you with one of those little yellow, well, not yellow, little rubber hammer things. Okay, right in the nerve. And uh, you don't really think about it in that case, do you? You know, your leg just moves involuntarily. Now, what's happening here is basically the stimulus is being um, picked up by your sensory neurons, and then uh, it is going to your interneuron. Now, your interneuron is actually, in this case, your spinal cord. Your spinal cord is going to interpret the input and say, move the leg, without your brain participating in that at all. Okay, and then it's going to signal the motor neuron to flex that muscle, and the muscle is known as the effector. Okay, so the effector is going to affect the change. Now, one thing I want to note here is the receptor is not the sensory neuron itself. The sensory neuron is going to be maybe connected with a specific specialized cell. For example, um, you know, in your nasal cavities and in your nose, you have special, special cells for sensing smell. You know, different types of particles which are interpreted uh, by the brain as different smells. But this, the receptor itself is a specialized cell that communicates um, to the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron takes the, the signal to the interneuron where the information is interpreted. Okay. Any question about the neural circuit or the, the reflex arc? Okay, now the speed of nerve impulses. Nerve impulses travel farther and faster along uh, an axon if it's myelinated. So that's that white stuff that's wrapped around it. The diameter of the axon affects the speed of impulse. The larger the diameter slows the nerve speed down. So a smaller diameter increases the nerve speed, or the nerve impulse speed, I would say, uh, is more accurate. Um, but also myelination will increase the impulse speed. Okay, so here we just have a little bit of a, I guess, a slide where you can see the white matter versus the gray matter. So here you're just going to have a lot more myelination of, of the nerve cells. Okay. And we, we defined this previously. Um, Is there anything new here? Well, gray matter is non-myelinated uh, neurons in the brain's spinal cord. One thing about gray matter is it is not found anywhere else, just the um, brain and spinal cord. So sometimes if people, you know, paramedics or whatnot, um, see a traffic accident and they see that there's gray matter involved, um, generally speaking, that person does not have a very good prognosis. Um, now, gray matter will not regenerate, therefore the damage is permanent. So if you ever have damage to your gray matter, um, because that's part of your brain or spinal cord, probably means you're not going to make it. Now, gray matter covers white matter in the brain. Now, the white matter has myelinated nerves in the brain that carry sensory and motor information, and white matter will actually regenerate. So that's a good deal. But the white matter um, covers the gray matter in the spinal cord. Okay, so that's that's the introductory uh, information, this topic. Um, you can review this topic when you watch it in the archive or the blog video, uh, which will be posted shortly after we conclude. Okay, uh, anyone that was not here in attendance does need to submit a tutorial summary that is a uh, minimum of one half page um, in a Word document. Uh, point form is acceptable. Okay. Any questions before we conclude? Okay, well, let's turn off.